One of the things that I love about the Silver Age of television are the stories that surface about actors and actresses who act selflessly on behalf of others. I find this so inspiring because the entertainment industry these days seems to be full of inflated egos and a what's in it for me attitude. So I'm happy to report that I've stumbled across another story, this time from Gilligan's Island, and in particular, the first mate that the island was named after. I am, of course, talking about actor Bob Denver. While he was the titular character on this critically panned but much beloved sitcom that only ran for three seasons beginning in 1963, Denver was never one to have much of an ego. He was already a veteran actor in the industry, having co-starred on the many loves of Dobie Gillis as hippie beatnik Maynard G. Krebs. Denver, while flattered to be the center of attention on a show like Gilligan's Island, recognized the importance of being surrounded by a talented cast. And talented they were, every single one of them. During the first season, however, the ever so hummable opening theme song seemed to create a hierarchy of importance by including most of the characters by name in the song. However, Don Wells, who played sweet and sexy country girl Marianne, and Russell Johnson, who played the professor, seemed to be relocated to a second tier and were only referred to as and the rest in the theme song. This really got Denver's goat. And, as you might guess, it didn't make Wells and Johnson feel very good either. Anyone who watched the show knows that all of the cast members were equally important. It also didn't help that at the time it seemed like fiery redhead Tina Luis, who played the aptly named movie star Ginger, was getting the lion's share of the press's attention, as manifested here by a couple of TV Guide covers from the era. Yep, I get it. Even way back then, put a gorgeous lady on your cover and you're bound to sell more copies of your magazine. But let's get back to Wells and Johnson. By the time the first season was drawing to a conclusion, Gilligan's Island was a bona fide hit and Denver felt like he had the clout necessary to go to creator-producer Sherwood Schwartz and make a demand. His demand was simply this, Sherwood, we need to redo the song. All of the characters should be treated equally and that means squeezing in the names of Wells and Johnson's characters. At first, Schwartz and team balked at the idea, claiming that it would cost too much money to get everyone back into the studio. But after Denver demanded that his name, the name of Gilligan, you can't remove that name, but he demanded it, that it be removed from the song if no action was taken. Well then, Schwartz and team, they felt like they had no recourse and they gave in. The season one theme song was sung by a folk group called the Wellingtons. Season two and season three, it wasn't credited to any particular group or band. Years later though, Russell Johnson in his book about the show said that the revised version was sung by a group called The Eligibles. Over the years until his passing, Bob Denver remained friends with both Russell Johnson and especially Don Wells. Clearly, in the age-old Marianne versus Ginger debate, Denver had made his decision. Bob passed away in 2005, I believe. Johnson, just a few years back in 2014. Don Wells, at the time of this video, was still working in the industry, even as she approaches her 80th birthday. So that's it. End of the day, Gilligan, I mean Bob Denver, stood his ground and forever won the respect and admiration of the cast and crew that made Gilligan's Island such a special, funny, and absolutely ridiculous show. So speaking of the Marianne versus Ginger debate, where do you land? Truthfully, I'm more of a Marianne guy. Let me know what you think in the comments section below, and while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I would be honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, as always, thank you so much for watching.